Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be diagnosing a check engine light on our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso Cantor FG with the 4P10 engine. This is the CRHD Heavy Duty OBD2 Code Reader from Launch. It's available on Amazon for about 200 bucks Canadian. This is a Fuso Connect. This is what the dealer uses to access your truck. With this, you need to use the Sentry software from Mercedes, and you can expect to pay between five to $7,000 if buying this new. So try and find a used one. Now, of course, I am aware that there are several other code readers out there that are capable of reading trucks like this, but these are the two that I have to compare. The real question is, can we get enough information out of a basic code reader to get us through the troubleshooting and diagnostics that we need to find the problem? For this video, I'm not going to be covering basic how to use an OBD2 code reader. I'm assuming if you're here watching this video, you probably know how to do that. So the launch scanner pulled a code of P053E, but that's all the info we get. Thankfully, the internet can show us that P053E means crankcase pressure too high. As you can see with the Sentry software, we get a little bit more info, but not that much, but it does indicate there are two sensors and the differential pressure is out of range. From here, we can go to the PDF manual, which indicates a few things we can check fairly easily, including the wiring to the sensor, which seems to be an easy place to start. The problem I found is actually locating the pinout diagram for the ECU plug. I scrolled through all the plug types and pinouts and it's simply not there. So where do we find that? In the Sentry software, of course. To make things more confusing but nothing to do with either code reader, the crankcase pressure sensors are called blow-by sensors in the manual, and number two is quite difficult to find because instead of listing where it actually is, they show it in the same hose as number one when in reality it's down low in the block. So armed with this information, I've now disconnected the wiring from the blow-by pressure sensor, either number one or number two, depending on how you read the book. And I'm going to be measuring from here down to the ECU. Having removed the harnesses from the ECU, we can now match up the pinout as what we found in the manual. Now, I will say, while you have your ECU off, I would highly recommend removing any corrosion from the back and applying a barrier coating in between the aluminum back of the ECU and the steel mounting plate. This is a very poor design if you go anywhere where you're going to encounter salt water. In salt water, steel and aluminum are going to react with each other. The aluminum is on the losing side, as you can see, and this can eat all the way through the casing of the ECU, which will render your ECU useless and you will need to replace it. Don't ask me how I know. Well, that's interesting because the diagnostics say I should be checking this when in reality I'm finding this. So once again, not what I was expecting to find. However, I do have continuity on the three wires, just not in the places I was expecting. This leads me to believe that it's probably not the wiring, which in the manual indicates to replace the sensor. However, there's this weirdo that stops by my shop every once in a while and he's pretty good at diagnosing strange problems, so let's see what he can find out. I don't know guys, tell me what you think, but uh, I'm pretty sure the crankcase pressure sender on here, way tucked down in the bottom of absolute nowhere land, I don't think it's supposed to do this when you get down there and wiggle it up. Wiggle the wires, oh, the whole thing turns. That's a good way to measure pressure, yeah? <laughs> Mitsubishi. That's not what I was expecting to find at all. Also, why don't you turn your phone on its side and film in landscape? Hey, why don't you turn your phone side and film in landscape? <laughs> I guess my next step is to tighten up sensor number two and see if that resolves the problem. I don't know if you're going to be able to see any of this, but where we're going is way up here 
is the turbo. That little yellow plug there. Pull the yellow plug sideways, which is full of dirt. Pull the plug off and then tighten the sensor. All right, just for good measure, I decided to pull the sensor out. And you can definitely see it's been leaking oil all around there. I'm gonna check and make sure that we don't have a double washer ring on here. I'm gonna clean this all up, put it back in and tighten it down. Okay, I'm gonna help you try and find this. Front differential, front spring mount, oil pan. These are your markers. Above the oil pan, you look up and right there you see a bit of a triangular kind of gusset. Right above that is where the sensor threads in. Triangular gusset. There. This is unbelievable. Now I've put my 27 millimeter socket and three quarter drive ratchet down somewhere and I can't find it. I think somebody's moving stuff on me. <laughs> well, since I've just had to do it, I might as well give you another tip. This is a 27 millimeter deep socket that you're going to need to get over top of that sensor. The problem is you need more distance before you can fit the ratchet. Then you don't have enough room to put your extension in there. So a little trick you can do if you need to extend shorter than your shortest extension, take your socket, throw an adapter into the next size down and then adapt back up again. And you've got an extension that's shorter than your shortest extension. So now that we've got sensor number two back in and buttoned up, nice and tight, sensor number one needs to be plugged back in. I need to put the ECU back on, reconnect the batteries, fire the truck up, clear the codes, and see if it comes back. While you may see this as a cheap cutting board you can buy on Amazon, I see this as a cheap dielectric shield for a Mitsubishi Fuso ECU. Well, unfortunately, it looks like I need to do a little more diagnostics. Well, that's strike one, I guess, but no harm done. I can't be any worse off having that sensor screwed in tight. If you have any thoughts, throw a comment down below and we'll see where this goes because there's definitely something strange going on here. Did you know there's a third way of reading codes and it doesn't even need a code reader? Maybe you should hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you don't miss a future episode where I explain how to do this. Well, that's it for this video, but make sure you come back next time because I'm going to start digging into that wiring and things get a lot more confusing. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.